Hey, good morning. You guys warm enough? Cold, isn't it? Can we kick the heat up, William, please? Where is he? He's not even there. He's speaking to the air. Chris will get it. Hey, let's open our Bibles, John chapter 17, and pick it up where we left off. Um... We talked last week about knowing God and, and uh, this idea of knowing Him personally. And, and, you know, there's a huge difference between religion and relationship. And, and I think that that's uh, such an important thing that, that uh, I just want to mention it again, you know, that you and I, you know, the question is, can we know God? Well, yes, we can. We can have a relationship with Him. We can get to know Him. He knows us inside and out perfectly. But, but you and I, as human beings, can have a relationship with the Almighty, the Creator of the universe. And that's what Jesus was talking about in verse 3, that you know, eternal life was, was knowing the Father, the only true God, and, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. See, Jesus, He went to the cross to make this possible because our sin separated us from God. But Jesus went to the cross to die for our sin so that we could have this, the way would be open. We could have a relationship with God. We could get to know Him. It's not just, you know, being religious people. I do religious things. It's actually having a relationship with Him. This is so important. I, I hate to even, you know, leave that verse behind because it's so crucial. This is really what, what our walk, our life as believers is really all about. Paul, the apostle, he said, you know, it was the greatest thing in the world, that there was nothing greater, that everything else compared to knowing Jesus is, was lost. It was dung. It was refuse compared to knowing him. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Jesus, what he was praying for as we carry on in there. And, and I wonder if any of you need prayer. Any of you ever need prayer? I mean, maybe you have someone that you can call. Uh, how's that go? Uh, call a friend. It's one of your lifelines. How's that go? Uh, phone a friend. There you go. Yeah, uh, what show was that again? Who wants to be a millionaire? Oh yeah, who wants to be a millionaire? And <laughs> and it's been a while since that's been on, but it was one of your lifelines. You know, you you could call a friend and to to help you get the answer, so you could win a million bucks, maybe. So, but sometimes you know. I have found this to be true, that sometimes when you really think you need someone to pray for you, you call them and they don't answer. Or, or they're not available, or whatever it is. But well, I, what Jesus is saying here today, and, and what we see is that, that Jesus is praying for us. Now that's something you don't think about, that, well, Jesus is praying for me. It, it, you know, if you know, if you called somebody and they said, yeah, I'll pray for you and I'll pray for you right now. Well, then, you know, and I know sometimes when someone's praying for me, I can tell you can, just something about it. But Jesus in this passage is praying for his disciples. He's praying for those who are his own. We sang about it a minute ago. You know, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. He's praying for those who are his and who better who better to have praying for you than Jesus praying for you? Like, that's better than having me pray for you. And, you know, you think, well, if the pastor prays for me, it's not, something's going to happen. Well, probably not. I mean, maybe not. I don't know. But if you have Jesus praying for you, like, that's, that's the very best, the best of the best, isn't it? Don't you think? Are you with me today? Hello. Let's look at verses 9 and 10, uh, John chapter 17. It says, Jesus, in his prayer, he says, I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me. For they are yours. 
All I have is yours and all you have is mine and glory has come to me through them. I pray for them. That's what he said there. He said he prays for those who are his and, and it's kind of this community property. If you belong to the Father, you belong to the Son. If you belong to the Son, you belong to the Father. Of course, that's all part of the Trinity, isn't it? But those who are his, he says, I, I pray for them. And, and those that were called out of the world, we talked about this last week, those who belong to God have accepted and, and obey his word. Those who believe in Jesus Christ, who he is, where he came from, that he was sent by the Father. So maybe we should ask ourselves right now, are we one of his? You can't just say Jesus is praying for everybody because he says, I'm not praying for everybody, not in this way anyways. He says, I'm praying for his. He's not praying the same way for the rest of the world. That doesn't mean he doesn't love the rest of the world. The Bible says he loves God loves the world. Jesus is the Savior of the world, but there's something very special about those that are His, that He's praying for them in this special way. So we have to stop and say, well, am I one of His? It's not just, you know, I was born in America, so I must be a Christian. I go to Calvary Chapel, I listen to the radio, I do this and that, so I must be one of His. Have, have you and I accepted Jesus Christ into our lives and hearts? We have a personal relationship like what I was describing earlier. That's what we're talking about here. Jesus praying. Uh, Chris talked about it as well. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says, You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You are not your own. We're His. I'm not mine, I'm his. I belong to him. He, he, bought, he bought me with a price, and that price was what? The cross. It was the blood of Jesus. He paid with his very life so that I could belong to him, so that I would be his, you see. When Jesus said, I pray for them, it's the, the present active tense, meaning it's now and it's an ongoing thing. It's an, it's an active thing, ongoing. So he says, I'm praying for them. And, and Jesus is praying for his own, and he's praying for us now. If you belong to him, if you're one of him, he is praying for you now. In fact, it says that he is at the right hand of God, which is, is where he is when he ascended into heaven. Isn't that where he went? Right? To the right hand of the Father. Uh, Paul says in Romans chapter 8, Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God. Who what? Who also makes intercession for us. See, it wasn't just those disciples back in that day. Paul says it's for us. It's for all of us who have trusted in Jesus Christ, who died, who rose again, who ascended into heaven. He is making intercession for you. Now, I have no idea what it, what's going on in your life. I have no clue. One or two of you, I might have a little idea, an idea or two of what's going on. But he knows exactly what's going on in your life, and he can intercede for you. He can pray for you. That's incredible. You know, again, do we even understand this? Do we realize it? Do you, do you think you get up today? Well, you know, I don't know if anybody's praying for me today, but Jesus is praying for me today. Jesus is interceding on my behalf today. Do you believe that? Why would you believe that? Let me ask that question. Why would you believe that? Because God just said so in his word. That's what it says, right? We believe what the Bible says. That's why we would, we would believe that. The truth. Jesus said you'll know the truth. What? And the truth will set you free. The truth is what changes us. How about in the book of Hebrews, an incredible verse. Therefore he, he's speaking about Jesus as our high priest, in that passage, he is able to save completely. And literally, 
that word completely means to the uttermost. He is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Why? Because he always lives to intercede for them. He always lives to intercede for them. He's he's there. He's never going to die. He's never going to go away. He's right there at the throne of God, the right hand of the Father, interceding. He he always lives and he's going to save us to the uttermost. Why? Because we have come to God through him. We are one of his. We have come to God the Father through Jesus Christ, the mediator, the only mediator, the only way to come to God. The Father. One more. This is this is for for those situations where He speaks to the Father in our defense if we sin, when we blow it, when we when we fall. We have someone who speaks to the Father. He prays for us, speaks in our defense. My dear children. John writes, 1 John chapter 2, I write this to you so that you will not sin. It's better if you don't. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He speaks to the Father in our defense. He's he's praying, and, and prayer, of course, is to God, to the Father. And Jesus is praying in this passage to the Father. We have somebody who stands up for us. Not to say, you know, that what we did was right, but to speak for us. Listen, it's covered. It's it's covered how? It's covered by what I did on the cross. The blood that he shed on that cross. You remember we've talked about this where, where Jesus told Simon Peter, he said, Simon, that Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, and that's like shaking. And, you know, if they, the, the sifting process is a shaking process. He's, act to, he's asked to shift you, uh, sift you like wheat. But Jesus said to Peter, and it was true then, and I think it's true today, he says, but I have prayed for you. But I have prayed for you. He knew what was going on in Peter's life. He knows what's going on in your life. He knows what's going on in my life. He said, but I have prayed for you. He says, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Jesus prayed for him. Now, now, Peter still went on to deny the Lord, didn't he? But his faith didn't fail. His courage did. He, he, you know, he, he had a hard time there, but he, 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 he was still in the hands of Jesus. And, you know, you and I, even when we blow it, we're still in the hands of Jesus. Why? Because we belong to him. And he doesn't just say, well, you know what? You blew it this time. Forget it. You're no longer mine. That's not how it works. When, when you're his, you're his forever. That's why we read in Hebrews to save completely to the uttermost those who come to God through him. He's always living to intercede for us. I have prayed for you, Simon. You know what Jesus is praying? He's praying for you. For you. He's praying for me. He's praying for his own. And he knows. He knows. Verse 11 and 12 it says, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. He's speaking to the Father, speaking about us, those that are his. Father... He says, I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. And while I was with them, I protected them and and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction. So that the scripture would be fulfilled. Jesus you know, he's telling us here, you know, he was, he was going to leave. He was going home. He wasn't going somewhere new. He was going back to where he was previously. He was already there before he came to earth, right? That's what the Bible teaches. That's what the Bible says, the, the pre-existence of Jesus Christ. He, didn't, he wasn't born in Bethlehem. That was where he started. No, he came down. He took a body. 
but he came down from heaven. He says, I'm, I'm not going to rem remain in this world any longer. He, he had been telling his disciples that already, right? I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. So if Jesus wasn't going to be there to pray for them, how, you know, how would they make it? How would they survive? How will we get on if, if, if you're not here? But you see, this is what, what I'm making a point about, that, that even though physically he wasn't there, he would be there interceding for them in heaven at the very right hand of God the Father. That's, that's an incredible thing. That's a wonderful, incredible, glorious thing. Notice, notice the, the, that he says there that while he was there with them, physically he protected them. But now he's praying, he's praying the Father to protect them. And the, the first prayer that he, that he really has for his disciples is that they would be protected. They would be protected by the by the power of your name, he says. My prayer, he says, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. Do we need to be protected? I do. There's a lot of evil. We, we saw, you know, the, in the prayer, the, the Lord's Prayer, we were, taught to, we were taught to pray, deliver us from the evil. And now he says, you know, he's going to... He, He's, he's praying for us that we would be protected from the evil. This word protect means to guard, to take care of, to preserve, to protect. There's something about this, isn't there, that he wants to take care of his own. He wants to take care of his own. You know, he never lost any. In, in this passage here, he, he mentions Judas. He says, none has been lost except the one doomed to destruction. Judas was never one of his. That's what it says in John 13. He says that, you know, they're all clean except not all of them are clean. In other words, he, he was never a true believer. He, he was never uh, one of uh, those belonging to God. Jump ahead to verse 15, or excuse me, verse 13. He says there, I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. So he says, I am coming to you now, but, but I'm, I'm saying these things, so, and, and they could hear these things so that they would actually have some joy in their lives. The joy, I believe, that what he's talking about here is the joy is that, that they would know that he's praying for them, that he is, is praying for their protection, for, uh, that they would be protected. Look at verse 15. He says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil. Some versions say the evil one, that the, 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 the words there are the evil, that you'd protect them from the evil. So it's not that he would necessarily take them out, at least not at that point in time. We would like to, I would like to just take me away from all this bad stuff. Take it all away from me. I, don't, I can't deal with it. But, but he says, not that he would be taken out of it, but they would be protected in the middle of it, that they would be watched over in the middle of it, protected in it, you see. Protected, watched over, guarded, preserved. Makes me think of Paul the Apostle in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And, and you know, we, we know this verse, but, you know, Paul was, incredible stuff was happening in, in his life, and to keep him from getting proud, the Lord said God allowed this, this thorn in the flesh to happen to him, right? And Paul said, please, take it away from me. I, I can't, you know, I, I can't deal. He went more than once, three times, it says he prayed. And what did God say? No, I'm not going to take that away from you, but I'm going to give you my grace. And the grace is enough to get you through, you see. 
We're not always going to be taken out of and delivered, and, 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 but we will give, be given the grace in the middle of it, you see, protected by the power of your name, by his spirit, sometimes even by angels. Is that true? You know, there's been some kind of unusual television shows, you know, touched by an angel and some of these weird things. And they, they've taken some truth and they've kind of went, you know, way in, in, you know, others, you know, where people turn into angels. And that's not true either. But the fact of the matter is God is, is protecting us by different ways and means. And one of his ways is, is angels. Now, this verse here in Psalm 34, he says, The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them. Now, this phrase, the angel of the Lord, could also uh, is used about the very presence of God himself as well. But the fact of the matter is that, that the Lord encamps around about them that fear him, that have a relationship with him. You remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? They got thrown into the fire because they wouldn't bow down. They wouldn't, you know, cave. Their faith was too important to them. And, and what does it say? It says that in the middle of that fire, it says they weren't alone. There was another one in the fire with them. And it, it's, it says that in that verse that, you know, it looked like a son of the gods. It was the son of God. Jesus was in there with them, I believe protecting them. They got out and it says their hair wasn't even singed. There was no smell of fire on them. They were protected in the middle of the fire, you see. Daniel was thrown into the, the, the den of lions, right? And, and he survived it. And he says this, my God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, O king. He was protected in the middle of the den of lions. God protected him. He knew him. He, he was one of his own, you see. There's an account of a, a missionary down in, in uh, the New Hebrides Islands and there were hostile, angel, uh, hostile natives that were surrounding the mission headquarters where he and his wife lived, and they were, they were going to burn the place down. This man's name was John Patton. They wanted to burn the place down. They wanted to kill them. They wanted them out of there. And, and Patton, it says, and his wife, they prayed all night, and at, and at dawn they were, they were amazed to see these attackers just leave. They turned and left. And a year later, it says that the, the chief of that tribe was converted. He became a believer. And so he asked him, what kept him and his men from burning down the house and killing them that night? And the chief said, uh, asked him the question, who were all those men that you had with you there? And Patton told him, he said, there had been no one there except his wife and himself. But the chief insisted that they had seen hundreds of men standing guard, big men in shining garments with drawn swords. God protected him in that particular instance. There's a, uh, an account in, in the book of 2 Kings, and uh, Elisha was a, a prophet of God, and and they were in a very tight spot, and, and, and Elisha's servant uh, he, he, he got up and, and, he, and, he, and he went out and he saw this army that was all around them with horses and chariots. And he says to Elisha, he says, what are we going to do? What shall we do? And prophet, the prophet Elijah, Elisha answered, he says, don't be afraid. He says, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, Open his eyes so that he may see. And then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha, protecting him, you see. Now, could he see that? The Lord allowed him to see it, 
at that point in time, but, but before that he couldn't see it. But, but Elisha just knew that God was going to protect him. God was going to take care of him. He didn't know how, but God was faithful and God would do that. You know what? I, I, I think that the Lord is, is protecting you and I in ways that we don't even see or know. I believe that to be true. You know, in little things, in big things that the Lord is working out. It doesn't mean that, that nothing bad is ever going to happen in our lives, but, but who knows what could have happened had he taken his hand of protection off of our lives. I mean, maybe it's something as simple. You know, I, I, I made a phone call yesterday about something I was uh, wanting, you know, to purchase and... and uh, and the guy said, oh, it's already sold, you know, and I was just uh, instantly disappointed. But then I thought, you know what? Maybe the Lord was protecting me from getting that thing because it was going to be such a bad deal. That's a, just a simple example, but how many, how many times do, do things just not work out the way we want them to, and God is actually protecting us from that situation? I don't know. But we need to trust and, and believe that that he is praying for our protection and he will take care of us. Why? Because we're his. Because we are his own. One last verse before we close. Verse 24. Jump down to verse 24. Because I love this. This is so powerful. This is so wonderful. Verse 24. Father, he says, he, he'd been saying, I'm going to leave. I'm going to go. But verse 24, he says, I want those that you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. He, he said, you know what? This is what our future is going to be. Yeah, we're here now and he's praying for us now while we're here, but we're not always going to be here. We're going to be there with him. We're going to be there with him. And, and, and you know, he talks about us knowing him, but one day we're going to see him. And we're going to see the glory and we're going to understand. And, and maybe, maybe he'll explain to us, you remember that time that, you know, this happened and it didn't go the way you wanted to? You remember that time? Well, this is what was going on that you didn't know about. Maybe he'll explain it to us. But, you know, I, don't, I think when we see his glory, I don't think we're going to even care about any of that stupid stuff anymore. But, you know, we're all a little curious. Maybe he will tell us. But he says, you know, those that you have given me, they're going to be with me. And they're going to see my glory, this glory that you have given me, the glory we read about in the first chapters of the Gospel of John. John 14 says that, yeah, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to get the place ready for you. Psalm 23, David says, I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is only temporary, folks. But till then, till then, just remember, Jesus is praying for you. You've got to remember. You've got to hold on to that. Why? Because it's his word and it's the truth. Hold on to the word. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you honor, we give you glory, and, and Jesus prayed to you, and, and we pray to you now, we come to you because of Jesus, because of what he did for us, that he opened the way that we can come and pray, and, and we just humble ourselves. It's, this is way beyond us, way beyond what we can and can't do, we We need you, Lord. We need you every hour, every day. It's a hard, hard world that we live in, and, and we need your protection, Lord. And Jesus, we thank you that you're praying for us right now. Even when we can't pray in those times, we, we can't even get the words out. We don't know what to say. We can't. We're overwhelmed. You're praying for us. You ever live to make interception, intercession for us. Thank you, Jesus. 
You know what's going on in our lives right now, each one of us. Big things, little things, good things, bad things. Oh, Jesus, thank you for watching out for us. Help us through this. Protect us through these things, Lord. Pray. We, we, we thank you that you're praying for us, that you are praying for us, interceding before the very throne of God. Lord, I want to close as well with just a prayer for any that don't belong to you. Maybe, maybe today is a day you want to open your heart and life and, and let Jesus in and belong to him forever and, and dwell in his house and have the benefits of his life, eternal life, and his intercession for you, his watching over you, protecting you. You can have it now and simply pray with me and say, Jesus, I, I'm lost. I, I need you. I want you to come into my life, my heart. Save me. Forgive me of my sin. I believe in the cross. I believe you died for me. I believe that you rose from the dead and that you ascended into heaven. All for me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, shall we? He loves